Okay. Well, let's um, let's continue on, uh, giving um, an overview of what R does and, and, and how it works. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is packages. Um, you got some experience uh, with packages, perhaps when you were either were or were not installing the um, additional packages I suggested for today. Um, the general idea is that R has a lot of additional packages that users have contributed. And some of the best functionality of, in R is in these user-contributed packages. You know, ggplot2, an awesome graphics package, is a contributed package. There are a number of really nice data manipulation packages. Um, and pretty much whatever you're into, whatever that might be, if it's data analytics, if it's mapping, if it's psychological analysis, if it's structural equation modeling, all these things, they have dedicated add-on packages that will often extend or implement things you might want to, um, to use. The general idea is that if you want to have a package, if you want to use it, it needs to be on your computer. Just like you would use any other software, um, you need to install that software and that involves downloading. Thankfully, uh, downloading and installing additional packages is very easy if, if they are on what's called CRAN or CRAN. Um, so, you know, you can actually visit CRAN if you want. Um, and so here's the home page for the psych package on CRAN. Um, but you don't usually download from there. Rather, you just go uh, install.packages and type in the name of the package. Oh, but you know, let's not do it. It's already installed on my computer. That's the, uh, the standard way. If you want to get the dependency, so if it relies on additional packages itself and you want to make sure that they're installed, then you can write dependencies equals true. Uh, you can also use our studio to install packages using packages install. So you just type it in and it sort of code completes. Um, and generally you just type it in and you can install multiple ones this way. So you can you know, install, install a bunch of packages all at once. These packages get saved to a library uh, which if you have multiple, you can choose. Um, there are ways, and I was discussing this before with uh, someone there, that if you're not happy with the location of the library, it's on a shared folder, you can specify it separately, um, uh, but you need to add something up into your startup file, which, yeah, I don't have notes on right in front of me, but um, it can be done. Um, Yes, this can also be helpful if you're on a work computer and sometimes you encounter issues with installing to particular directories. Generally, I find if, if installed at packages is not working, you can use this install button. Um, so once you've got it on your computer, you can then use the package, but if you want to use it in a particular analysis session, you have to load it. You have to, so to speak, attach the package to your library. So the library function, it, it, Note that these, are, these um, add-on things are called packages, they're not called libraries, but you add the package uh, to your library. So by typing library psych, I'm adding the psych package to my workspace um, so that I can use the functionality in that package. Um, it is also possible for, to, for frequently used um, libraries to be put in your startup file, but that can create dependencies. As a general word of advice, you'll often probably encounter this error. Um, there is no package called foo. Now, actually, there is no package called foo, so that makes sense. It doesn't even exist. But say this was a real package um, that did exist, then what that means is that you need to run install.packages foo and get that on your computer. Um, so, yeah, if you get that error message, it's implying that you need to go to, you know, install and type in foo or yeah, whatever it might be that you don't have. Um, yes. Other times you're trying to run a function, like this turns a correlation to a Z, whatever. Point is, it can't find the function Fisher Z. Now, Fisher Z is a function in the psych package. And the problem is, I haven't loaded the psych package. Now, it's not obvious from that line, but 
uh, that even Fisher's Z comes from the site package. So presumably you have to know that Fisher's Z comes from a particular package, and if you wrote the code, you probably do. Um, and in that case, you need to either load it, and that will work, or if you haven't already installed it, you'll need to install, then load, so that it will run. You can see which packages are attached by searching uh, the workspace. And we can see here you've got the global environment, and then we've got a list of attached packages. So the psych package, uh, the mass package, you might not have all of these attached. Um, some of a few packages like stats, graphics, utilities, methods will automatically be attached, others will have to be loaded in. Um, yes. If you want to make it very clear that you're using a particular function from a particular package, you can use the colon operator. So um, I can type psych colon colon, it auto completes, and we can see all the functions in the psych package. So that can make it very clear that you're using a particular package for function. But if the package is attached, that this package name colon colon is optional. All right, so that's packages. I uh, just want to talk a bit about missing data. This is something that kind of, I guess, distinguishes R from some other programming languages. Um, so we represent missing data with the, the letters capital N, capital A. So there's a missing data in a vector of numbers, and here's, a missing, here's missing data in a vector of characters. And sure enough, there it is. Uh, we can see whether a particular value is missing with the is.na is function. So notice uh, x equals na is, is not appropriate. Doesn't make sense for whatever reason. You have to use the is.na function and that will tell you whether a particular value is missing. One thing that really catches people by surprise when they first start using functions on missing data, so we have this vector x. What's the mean of 1, 2, missing, and 4? Now you might say, well that's something like 2.5 or whatever. But what R says is Na. The mean of 1, 2, Na, and 4 is missing because it's not defined. And likewise the standard deviation. So that may seem like an unhelpful behaviour at first. and Maybe it is an interesting default, but R requires you to be explicit. So you can, a lot of these functions will have an na.rm, i.e. remove the missing data, and then that will return probably the value you expect. Alternatively, you can um, omit all the missing values um, on a vector or on a data frame, and that will return the vector with just the non-missing data, and you can do it that way. Um, here's a data set that's attached called the survey um, data set. Um, we can see that it's got some missing data here. Missing height data, missing pulse data, missing whether the person specified it in metric or imperial. And so, on. so we can um, do a listwise deletion of missing data uh, with the na.omit. So that's going to delete any row that has one or more missing data points. And I could, for example, assign that to a new variable, which is like my listwise deleted data set. So the original one had 237 rows, and this clean version has 168. I'm not saying listwise deletion is what you want to do all the time, but that's just a very quick and dirty way of um, dealing with missing data. There's plenty of imputation functions um, and more sophisticated ways of dealing with missing data in R. Yes. The, the survey is a data frame. Yeah. So let me clarify that. Um, or does it, it apply to data frames? It, it applies to all data frames. Yes. So survey is an example data frame, uh, and um, yes, uh, many packages come with built-in data sets. Um, survey is one example of the built-in data set in R. So I was just using uh, the survey data set as an example data set. That has some missing data. Is that? Is that? Um, okay. 
so yeah, um, so yeah, you could use na.emit on any data set that you have. Or vector, yep. It works on both. A lot of functions in R will work on both various, will work on data frames, will work on, um, yeah, vectors. Um, all right, so let's let's talk about data frames. These are the most important data structures in R for analyzing data. These are what you store your data in. You know, if you have a data set that you want to analyze, you have a hundred people that you've surveyed and you want to understand their responses, or you have um, some sort of um, you know economic data that you want to model. Um, you have uh, consumer data. You, I don't know whatever it is that you happen to be looking at. You're probably going to be storing it in a data frame. It has rows. It has columns. And I'm going to be looking at this um, survey data set. Um, it's in the mass package. It's a built-in data set, and I think you have to run this data function to load it. So essentially uh, R comes with a bunch of built-in data frames. Uh, packages have them to illustrate analyses um, and you can load those data sets and you know just learn R or play around with R using these built-in data sets. So I'll often be doing that. Uh, and the idea is if you want to use a data set then the package it's in it needs to be loaded and you run data in the name of the data set. So I'll just call it my data, I guess, to overcome this issue that we're talking about a general data frame regardless of what it is. So we can get the names of the data set. Um, this might be one of the first things you look at. So this has got sex, the length of the writing hand, the non-writing hand, some pulse rate stuff, and so on. You can look at the structure of the data set. So this will show, at first, how many rows? 237. How many variables? 12. And for each variable, it will tell you what kind of type it is. Is it a number, character? We'll go into factors in a bit. They're basically like um, categorical variables. Um, yeah. There's a couple of nice general descriptive functions. I, I quite like the describe function in the hmisc package. So that will give you general summary information um, and it will, the kind of information it gives depends on the type of variable. So if it's categorical, it might give you percentages, 50-50 male, female. If it's number, numeric, it gives you like the mean length of things and percentiles and so on. The site package, um, interestingly enough, and this is an illustration of two packages with a function that's called the exact same name, uh, also has a nice descriptive um, statistics function called describe, but that only works for numeric data. So that'll give you things like um, means, SDs, medians, and so on. Um, yeah. Uh, you can certainly have, there's a lot of functions to summarize vectors which could be applied to individual variables in a data frame or um, just a, a straight vector. Um, so I'll illustrate that briefly. So if you wanted to get um, some function of x, there's all the standard ones like the sum of x or the product, so multiply them all together. And a lot of you know central tendency things like mean and median. Get the length of the vector if you want, so that's you know there's five. Uh, lots of measures of spread, range, min, max. The site package also has some skewness stuff if if that's relevant to you. Often you'll be wanting to create new variables um, in your data frames, um, and so it's worth speaking about how R does operations. Um, in a lot of general programming languages, if you want to um, add two variables in, in vectors, you might have to put them in a, a loop and add them up one at a time. In general, R has what they call vectorized operations. So if I want to add the column X and Y, I can literally uh, say just add column X plus column Y and assign it to a new column which I'll call Z. <laughs> So sure enough, um, that's done that element-wise um, addition. Or we could do element-wise multiplication. So multiply column X and column Y. 
three times minus three. Okay, so we can also use single values and they will be recycled through the vector. So it will add, so if I say the vector x plus 10, it will add 10 to each element of x. So we've added 1 plus 10 is 11, 2 plus 10 is 12. So yeah, a lot of um, operations in R are vectorized like that. So I think this is an important uh, concept uh, to you know, get a little bit of experience with working with data frames. Um, hopefully you've installed the AER package. Uh, if you haven't, because um, we're going to be using some uh, social survey data, um, which is quite a, just a nice little data set looking at um, you know, kind of economic panel data. If you haven't installed capital AER, just go to packages install AER and then it will load. So yeah, quick exercise maybe for 10 minutes and then we'll come back at uh, maybe 10 past and uh, move on to the next um, section. <laughs>